would you please? So, so with your most like, I mean, it's impressive. You guys have a very long line of work that you've done and uh, a part to directing and all this stuff. I mean, before all that, before you really jumped into this career and, and did these things and these amazing voices, I mean, what was life like before that? Who were y'all before becoming these voice actors and directors? Who were we? Yeah, what was your I was case? Steve Staley. <laughs> and I was Steve Kramer. <laughs> <laughs> I was kind <laughs> um, Most of us came up, uh, when you say where, who were we, we were, we were actors hoping to have a career on camera. We all came into this expecting to be movie stars. Yeah, he's not, right. Not one of us expected to be voice actors. You moved to California from your home and your parents and your family, seeking your destiny and fame and fortune. And then the Plinko of life, if you know Plinko, yeah. you drop your life in here and it goes And these are all the things that happen to you on your journey. And then the next thing you know, you're an old man, and what? Um, Whoa. what was that? Whoa. What did he, what? And you're sitting on stage at a convention, right? But it's all born of the dream yeah. of being an actor, which still is what we do, but he's right. We all, everybody gravitates to LA for one thing, and if they say they're not, that's their lie. <laughs> I'm going to give you all old Rotten Tomatoes, and when you go to his booth, I want you to throw them at him. <laughs> Who's old now? <laughs> Who's old now? Who's, Who's old now? now? Who's old now, you little bastard? <laughs> I am, uh, I think I'm the oldest guy in our, in our field, in our group. I, I learned it uh, a long time ago from a guy who was older than me and who's passed on now. Uh, but he taught me all the technique and the basics of this stuff, and I've tried to, to pass it on to other people. I don't think I taught Steve, but you know what? If you go and you do the work, you pick up a lot of stuff just from being in the room yeah. and uh, seeing how it works. The easiest way to learn is watching other people who are good at it. Yeah. And then you go, oh, I never thought about that. Or sometimes even directing, although I don't like being a teacher when I'm a director, but I'll say, hey, while wow, we're... Well, me and the clients and are talking, why don't you be looking at the next <laughs> few lines? Because, yeah. And you can tell when an actor's not doing that, because if we've been talking, and then we go to the next line, and they're still messing up, it means they were not sitting there going, you know, practicing it. And I don't mind saying those kinds of things, because I know it'll help that person yeah. in the future. It'll help me, because those are the things that help uh, a session move along, when an actor can get through stuff cleanly, and quickly without messing up a lot even though messing up is part of the game right we all yeah. we all mess up it's, it's I messed up cleaner you can be I messed up once in uh, 1988 <laughs> and I've never lived it down oh. <laughs> no actually I started out as an on-camera actor I've done about 35 TV shows uh, and movies I did well, what was your first breakthrough the first movie is the first one yeah well, I don't know what was the first one. It's too far back to remember. I've done, um, what was the Arnold Schwarzenegger? I guess Schwarzenegger? most notable. What was that, the Arnold Schwarzenegger movie? Um, oh, right. That you, Total, Total Recall? Recall? Was it Total Recall? No, I don't think I was in Total Recall. I should have brought my resume in it to the table. <laughs> I've done shows like uh, Golden Girls and Desperate Housewives and... Um, should have brought my resume. In. I know. I can't remember. Did you? Did you? It's hard for people to believe that you can't remember, but you can't remember. It doesn't seem like. It doesn't seem famous when you're there and it's hot and you had to wake up at four thirty in the morning. It doesn't. <laughs> yeah, you think that you think that all the stuff that we did we would remember instantly. I've actually had people come up to the table and, and ask me specific questions about voiceover stuff about the anime. And, it, and I feel bad because I don't remember all the details of the stuff because it's been too many, too many years and too many shows. I keep showing them my resume. I brought it with me so that I could remember some of the shows that I did. Just in anime, my resume that I've got out there, which isn't complete, is eight pages single-spaced. Oh, so man. you have to imagine how... That's eight yeah. pages of credit, single-spaced. And I... That's know. what's great about anime, though, because... Yeah. If you look at our IMDB, it, it just rolls. It's got a ton of credits. And so I know that 
uh, when people look you up, and I'm not talking about uh, fans, I'm talking about people who want to hire you for something or want to see if you're legit, they look at your IMDb, and in so many ways, thanks to anime, it is eight pages long, which gives you a credibility beyond um, what what the hours you spent <laughs> doing yeah, it, really. because it shows that you've been working in one way or the other. Uh, Instead of just like maybe six entries on your IMDb page. They look at it and they say, oh, you must be a good actor. Look at all the credits. Kind of. And they say, well, they don't know that I cast myself in some of that stuff. <laughs> because, Lupo, because, baby. Because I, I, yeah, I was the director and I needed somebody to do this part. I didn't know anybody that would do it better than me and nobody was around, so I just did it. Hardly fair. We've all put ourselves in our own shows. Hardly fair, but I mean, you just pulled a uh, Quentin Tarantino. You're all right. It's okay. He appeared in his yeah. stuff, didn't he? Does it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> so, that being and everything, besides working your butt.